ओम ज्ञान तिवृंद ज्ञानांजन शलाकया चक्षुन्मील ये नस्म श्रीगुरव नम वंदेह श्रीगुरोकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवाश्चूप साग्रजात सह गुण रघुनाथ तम सजीव साध्वत सवधूत परिजन सहित श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपादा सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंध दीनबंध जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभान सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायिने कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौर तुषे नम पंचतत्वात्मक कृष्ण भक्तस्वक भक्तावतार भक्ताख्यम नमा भक्तशक्ति श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रीअद्वैतगनाधर श्रीवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जन्मादितरतार्थे सुविध्य स्वराट तेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवय मुयसूर तेजो वारी मृदा यथा विनिमय यो नृषा धाम स्वयं सदा निरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीम नारायण नमस्कृत नर चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर Reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, chapter thirteen. Beginning from no, chapter fourteen, verse number thirty-four. So we read how King Vena he was very proud, and he openly declared himself as God. and made an announcement that nobody should worship anyone else except him because all the gods exist in him sarv dev mayo nepah and this is of course a statement to confirm in scriptures so this was very disturbing to the sages whose job is to give proper knowledge to humanity the business of sages and brahmana is to guide humanity in proper understanding of human life hello this is their hello major duty responsibility and that's why they are honored and they are maintained by the society so when they saw that the king himself is propagating in proper idea in proper philosophy then they became alarmed and decided to correct the king so they approached him and they tried to instruct him in a very friendly manner but king was to insolent very proud and did not pay any attention rather he made fun of them so these people are completely childish ignorant and stupid to speak all this nonsense 
You don't even understand the basic idea that King is the protector of people. That's why he is called Nripa. Nri means human beings and Pa means when he protects, when he maintains. So he says, where else is anyone else? He is God, who is protector. So he just insulted them. So when the sages heard this name, they became very angry. Previously they were also angry, but they were keeping it under tab. And now they became overtly, explicitly angry. <coughs> so Bhagavatam, as I said, is a very important book. You can also study philosophy in Vedanta Sutra and the Upanishads. But Bhagavatam gives practical knowledge how to live the life of philosophy, how to put this philosophy in practical life. So these stories are very instructive by nature, how we have to live, because the idea of Vedic scriptures is to teach us love of God, which is the highest we can attain and the most sublime and satisfying thing for the soul. But for that, one has to understand everything clearly. It is not that something is going to happen by itself. People have some kind of vague idea that they can attain it just by doing certain rituals or following certain procedures. No, it does not happen. One has to have very clear understanding. And the reason for it that although theoretically it is possible, but because we are not qualified like that, we have lived in this material world and we have developed various types of opposing samskaras which are not matching with the practice of love. <coughs> so those samskaras, those impressions, they become a big obstacle. And those impressions give us wrong ideas, wrong desires, and we act on them. <coughs> and then we have the students. Because if you want to live with God, you have to know who is God, and what is His mind, what is His liking, what He does not like. And we have to practice that. We have to show it here. That's why this is the field of practice within the Sadhana Chetra. If we can show it to Him that we can act properly, then we can enter and play with them. Like if you want to take part in a play, first you have to do rehearsal. And when you have perfect in your rehearsal, then you can be put on the stage. Otherwise a good director will not allow you to come on the stage and connect your role in the play unless he is satisfied. So Krishna is like that. He is a good director. And he is creating situation for us to learn. And the situation which is created for us is to show us our weakness. So if we are humble, then we can understand that this situation is teaching me something. Only that we can get angry at others, blame others, fight, and in a way become defeated in the fight or we defeat others and become proud. And if we become defeated, then we become distressed and frustrated. But that is not the way in spiritual life. That may be in the material world. In spiritual life, we have to learn how to take responsibility ourselves. Scriptures, teachers, they show us the way. But it is we who have to learn it. We have to understand, we have to make our own promise or make an effort. Well, everything happens by grace, but effort we have to make. So God is very clever, very intelligent and also compassionate. So He puts us in a situation where our weaknesses will be reflected, like showing a mirror to you. You may have a spot in your face, you cannot see it yourself. Because your eyes do not see things which are very close to us. But 
<coughs> so there is a mirror in front of my eyes. Then I can see. But now if I see the spot on my face in the mirror and I break the mirror, then this mirror is a nonsense. It's showing me this spot on my face. How dare he can do that? So you are free to do that. You can break the mirror. There is no problem. But that is not going to clear the spot. The spot is not going to go away. You may not see it. It will remain. So similarly, we meet people, we are facing different situations in our life and this is all for us to learn, become educated and advance. But if we don't become educated, then we will remain wherever we are. Just like if you go to a school and if you are in a particular grade, then you don't advance to the next grade unless you pass the exam of that grade. If you fail, then you have to repeat. And then you pass the exam, you go to the next grade. If you fail, you have to repeat again. You cannot go to the next grade unless you pass the exam. So in the same way, if we don't learn to rectify ourselves, then God will keep on putting us in the same situation. And many times it happens in people's life that they actually attract the same situation wherever they are. They will meet similar kind of people, create same environment around them and continue, unless they transcend it. So then they go to the next class. But usually people don't make advancement. Because we have developed immunity for advancing. And that is because of our pride, like Veda. So this Veda mentality is also inside us. And I have said it many times that these stories are there to teach us. Because these mentalities all exist inside us. And if, we, if someone tells this to you directly, you will get angry, like putting a mirror in front of your face. So then it is told that somebody else is like this and this is wrong with him. If we are intelligent, then we can try to see that in us. And if we have it, then we give it. So this is how this book is great. That's why it is said that Srimad Bhagavadam Purana Mamalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priya. It is very dear to Vaishnavas because Vaishnava means someone who wants to worship Vishnu, who worships Vishnu. So those who are perfected beings, they are already doing, and those who are on the path of perfection, they are also called Vaishnavas. It is very dear to them because they can learn how to be perfect from this book. So Vena, in English we have the word Venus comes from the word Venom. And this Venus is supposed to be the place of environment. Right? Planet Venus. Venus? Mm -hmm. It's actually Venus. It's planet beauty and enjoyment. Beauty, enjoyment, no God. So this Venom mentality, this does not work in bhakti. And the sages are like the teachers who are trying to correct him. But the student is too proud because he comes from the Venus planet. So who are you? I am the king. I don't care for him. So then they said, Hanyatam, Hanyatam, Yasha. Papa Prakriti Dhuna says, kill this rascal. <laughs> so when he cannot correct a criminal, then he has to be hanged sometime. Okay? It's capital punishment. Sometimes a criminal is put in the prison, hoping that he will be rectified. But when the case is beyond repair, 
Then they put the noose around the neck and get rid of. Let him take another bath. Try again. Bond with the samskaras where at least a person can take instructions. So Rena I was born with the samskaras that there is no hope for him. That's why he says prakriti dharuna. Prakriti means nature and dharuna means cruel. That he is just so cruel by nature that just like we have a part upside down, no matter how much rain falls on it, not a drop will stay in it. So that is prakriti dharuna. No humility, no patrata, no capacity to hold good instruction. They didn't have, there is no basis, what can you do? So then just break the pot, that's occupying space in the house. So therefore this says, Hanyatam, Hanyatam, Isha, Patoha, Prakriti Dharma. He says he is a Patoha, he just sin, it's full of sin, so no need to have this person, so he does not deserve to adorn the seat of a king, nor a deva or something. Why? Because he is criticizing Vishnu, he is the biggest offense he can do. He is our very source, he is the source of the universe and he is compassionate who comes again and again in this world to help us. We have to decide him. Then where is the hope? So he says that he has become too much proud and does not even understand that all this opulence which he has is coming because of the grace of Krishna. So, Itham Yavasita Hantum Vishya Rudha Manyavaha Nijagnu Hunkarate Naivanam Atam Machutan Daya. So, then when they had decided like this, then what happened that? The sages who were now rude manyava. Previously they were called good manyava. Man means, man means anger. So good means hidden. So previously they were with the hidden anger and now they are good manyava. Now anger has moved from good to rude. It's coming out. The lid is not able to hold it like it was a cooker. So now the whistle is blowing. <laughs> Previously everything was inside and you could not see that there is actually steam from the water boiling inside. Now it's blowing the whistle. So that's why they are called rude money. So what did they do? They killed him. Nijarnur Hunkratai Hunkratai E Venam Atamachitaminda. So they just did hmm. like this. And just by the hmm, he died. Hunkar <laughs> means hmm, Hunkar means to do, Hunkar means to do hmm. <laughs> So they did Hunkar and he was dead. Venam Hunkritai Nijagni. So why is that? He says Hatha Machita Ninde. He says that because he was actually killed by the criticism of Lord Vishnu. He was, he was only living. Uh, looked like he is breathing, but he was already dead. Just like when Krishna, he killed Kamsa, he did not have to kill him. He was already killed out of fear. That's why he says Bayad Kamsa. Kamsa, he attained Krishna by fear. 
because he, he died out of fear. When he saw Krishna coming to him and jumping up onto his dais, then he already died out of fear. And when he died out of fear, Krishna just removed his dead body because dead bodies would not be in the cost of a king. That's what he did. He just pulled him off the seat and threw him down. So he was also killed Nindaya. Hatamachit Nindaya. So he was already dead. They just did him and he fell off. So Rishibhi Swasram Padam Gate Putra Kale Varam Sumitha Pale Amasa Vidya Yoga in a Shochati. So after killing him, they left that place. They did not stay there. And then when they have gone back to their ashram, then what did Sunitha, the mother of Vena, do? That she protected, preserved the body of her son by some vidya or some tantric knowledge. So she preserved the body. Like these days also they present the body, in the Stalin's body or Karl Marx's mm -hmm. body that they present. Mm -hmm. Is it Karl Marx? Lenin. 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 So his body is preserved. Mm -hmm. So like that she also present the body, although she was in distress because the son was killed. So, Sri Vishnu Chakrati says, Vidya Yoga in a mantra sahitaya, Tailadi Pachyat Yuktaya. In this word, Vidya Yoga, that she preserved the body with Vidya Yoga, and says that this is using the mantra along with the oil and some other herbs to utilize to preserve it. That's what it means. So, now what happened after that? So now one problem is solved, the other one is there. Because earlier we remember that this situation was like the ants on a wood which is burning on both hands. So the ants are going to one side, there is fire, so they turn back. They go to the other side, there is also fire. So Vena was there, he was causing trouble. They killed Vena, means now the ants are going to the other side. Now the decoids and thieves. They are happy because they said we, we actually went out of profession all this time. <laughs> so they became immediately happy. So they came out. So that's why it says, Ekada muniyaste tu saraswat salilal plutaha kutvagni satkatha shakru pravishta saritate That once, one day, the sages, they had taken bath in the river Saraswati and then they performed the daily sacrifice and then they sat down to have satsang, satkatha, this recitation of the Puranas and discussion on that. So they were sitting on the bank of the Saraswati River, Saraswati. Saraswati means goddess of knowledge, means they were situated in knowledge. And therefore they were discussing the Vedic scriptures. So when this happened, then they saw something very unusual. It says, Viksha Thittan Mahotpatan Pahur Loka Bhayankaran Apya Badrama Nathaya Dasyudhona Bhave Bhavaha So then they saw that there were various omens, bad omens they saw, which were very terrifying. Loka Bhayankara. And they saw that the earth was unprotected and the backwards were ruling all around. 
so this fact that this is not good at all so they again started thinking what is to be done they we thought that some when you see some bad omen then you know that some something bad unwanted and desirable some calamity is going to come that's what omen means it instructs something which will happen in future this saw this utpata lok bhayankar very terrible omen सो एवं ऋषंत ऋषियो धावताम सर्वतो दिशम आमसु समुत्थित भूरी चौराणी अभिलुम्पताम सो वन दे वर डिस्कसिंग लाइक दिस दैट व्हाट विल हैपन व्हाट इज टू बी डन द अर्थ इज नॉट प्रोटेक्टेड बाय द पोएट्स सो दे सॉ दैट देयर वाज बिग डस्ट इन द स्काई बिकॉज़ पीपल वर रनिंग अराउंड एंड दे आर रनिंग The dust was going up in the air because there are a lot of thieves who are trying to steal and run around. And maybe people were chasing them, or they were chasing people. So this is what they noticed. Tadupadram upadravam agyaya lokas sevasulum patam bhartriyupra tetasmin nanyanyan chayi dhan satam. so they understood that there is disturbance all around and the wealth of people is being looted and now because there is no protector so people are killing each other so this is they saw that whoever is powerful then he is taking advantage of the situation क्षत्रियोकाशन or kill the weak and those who were kshatriyas they were protecting themselves and they were thinking why you have to bother about others so they were indifferent chora prayam jalpadam heen sattva marajikam lokam navari chatta pita dosha darshana so it says that the whole society became like full of thieves and there was anarchy and the weaks were being troubled and exploited and those who had the power to protect others they also did not do their duty because they thought why we have to put ourselves into trouble because when there is no king you have no support and if you try to oppose somebody and he becomes your enemy and when you will get a chance he will try to kill you Because you know that this guy is an obstacle to my job, so you try to oppose some mafia, then they will kill you at the first opportunity. So therefore, nobody bothered. If there is strong king, then at least they can take help from the king and get the guy punished. So this is what happens when there is a strong ruler. So now they are deciding something. Say, Brahmana ha samdhika shanto dina nam samupe shaka ha shabte dhamma tasyati dhamma ghanda tpayo yatha. So Brahmanas, they are samadarsi. They have equal vision and they are peaceful, but they cannot neglect. In the plight of suffering. All the brahmanas are supposed to be samadarsi, 
as Gita says that one who sees a dog and dog eater and elephant and equal he is called a Brahmana, Pandit. But this does not mean that you become neglectful of the suffering humanity. So he says if one does that, then their austerity and their power it becomes dissipated. Just as if there is a pot and it has a hole in it, then all the water stored in it will be covered. So like that their power will be lost if they did not do something. So Krishna Chakrati says that Shaktanam Kshatriyanam Avarane Dosha Iti Kim Vaktavyam Samadrigapi Shantopi Brahmano Dinanam Sampekshako Bhavet Taritasyapi Brahma Tapasravati so he says that what to speak that if a Kshatriya is not protecting people, that is a flaw because he is not doing his duty. Even a Brahmana who is supposed to be very peaceful and equanimous, if he becomes neglectful and does not do something about the situation, then his power, his austerity, also gets lost. Nanga seven so Rajar share Asha Sansthatu Marhati Amoga Viriya Hinipa Vances Minkesha Vashraya. So now the sage is there thinking that he says that this dynasty of Anga, who was a Rajarsi, he was a very saintly king. So it does not deserve to be lost because they have killed Vena and it looks like that Vena had no sons because he was young, probably he was not even married. He was put on the throne and very quickly he made this announcement. And then the sages came and killed him. So they are saying that it will be very improper that this dynasty comes to an end at Vena. Because there have been many great devotees who have taken birth in this dynasty. Kesha, Ashraya, Monsayasmi, Mojiviriyamata. They were very, very powerful. So we have read earlier that great king like Manu, Dhruva and his son Utkala he did not even rule although he was made the king. So all these great devotees have appeared in, the, in this dynasty. So it will be very improper now if this dynasty is brought to an end by the king of Vayana. So the sages are also a little worried that not only that there is anarchy and problem for people but there is another problem that this dynasty comes to an end then maybe this is an offense to all these people and that is not good for them because Dhruva is still living. You know that he has just through a planet and he is living there, Manu is also living and probably some other people were also living. So if they hear that their dynasty has been brought to an end, they may not be happy. So this may become an offense to them because if they are displeased. Because they did care, as we know that. When Dhruva was fighting with the Yakshas, then Manu personally came to stop him. So that means he did care for his dynasty. And especially because Manu is one of the Prajapati, he does care. He wants that dynasty continues. So this 
will not be very pleasing. Manu is a great devotee of the Lord. So as he says that Mogviriya Hindripa Vansayasmin Keshavasraya that many great devotees have taken birth in this dynasty. So this should not come to an end. So as we have seen earlier this idea of committing offense is very important in the path of bhakti to know this and how to avoid it. And the stories are also explaining this in a very subtle manner and how we have to be very very careful about it. Not that we just execute our devotional activity, we also have to avoid being offensive to our rationals. So for this reason they considered this point. So Sri Krishna says, Nanu evam chet tarhi bhragvadeyaste muniya katham nishinta hastitha. So if this is the case that even brahmanas who are equanimous, peaceful, they should not be indifferent, then why the sages like Bhrugu were indifferent when the situation appeared like this? So when this verse say that they were not indifferent, they did consider. They were worried. Teva Swair Dasyu Vada Praja Palana Bhyam Tapakshaya Vikshep Adikam Alakshya Kopi Eko Jano Raja Kartavya Iti Vavasthayam Paramrishya Ahu. He says they only they consulted among each other and they said that Dasyu Vad Praja Palana Bhyam Tapakshya that this decoids they are killing and there is no protection for people so this is going to bring harm even to our status so considering this they decided that somebody has to be made a king and who should be made the king they again must have considered so when this consideration was done then this is what the conclusion came only there are many other options which were discussed and maybe one of the ministers should become the king or maybe they make a committee to rule something they would have decided so now they came up with this idea this is how this verse was spoken this is the ultimate conclusion sanasthatum nashti bhautum says that it is not good to bring this dynasty to an end so we must do something so then what did they do that is being described it says vinishchitya evam rishayo vipannasya mahi patehe mamanthururum tarasa tatra shidava hunko naraha so when they have decided like this then they churned the thigh of the king's body and when they churned that then what happened a dwarf appeared my churn tatrashi bahuko nara his name was called bahuka so Bahuka here means a dwarf. He was very little in height. Bahuko Vamanaiti Pratham Tabdeha Matransa Pratham Bahu Prakati Bahu. So that he is the first one who came out. So how he or he looked that is being described here. It says Kaka Krishna Vati Haswango Vashvahur Mahanahu Haswapani Nimrana Sagro Rattaksha Tamda Murdhajaha That he was black like a crow. 
completely black in color and he was very short and all his limbs were short like Lilliput Lilliputians you know, have small legs Lilliput? Yes, it's small, it's like a small human like an what is that now? Believers or elves? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they were very small guys. They <laughs> <laughs> were trying to tie him down. They are called Lilliputs? Yeah, I, I didn't know. I didn't know yeah. how well we could. And Jerry is also small, he has a big head, like a mature person is small. But the little is everything small, small face, small. everything. They were little guys. And this guy was very big, this believer. When he went there, he saw these small guys. But then when he was tired, he fell asleep. Because he, I don't remember the whole story, he traveled somewhere. I think he was in a boat. Broke and came on this island. So he was like a normal being, but people living on this island were the size of the thumb. So he saw this. And then he fell asleep on the beach. And he woke up. He saw that these small guys were walking on his body and they had tied him. <laughs> so this was a small guy. So he had very small limbs, Rasubahu, very small arms, but long face. His chin was long, and Rasupani, and very short hands, and Nimra Nasagro, and very bent nose, and Raktaksha, red eyes. And Tamru Murdaja, and the hair were of copper color. So these days people like to dye their hair some red, some green. So his hair was also copper color, and red eyes, and flat nose, and long chin, and short sides, and very black in color. So this is how he came out. But he was very humble. So he says, Tam tu tevana tam dinam kim karomi iti vadinam nishida iti abruvan tata sanishada stato bhavat. So when he came out from the thai, then very humbly he asked them that what shall I do? Immediately, he was not lazy. So he immediately asked, what shall I do? So this is the quality of a Vaishnava. That's why Vaishnava is also called Kinkara. Kinkara means Kim Karoma. He said the same thing, Kim Karoma. What shall I do? So they said, just sit down. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> so because they said Nishida. Nishida means sit down. So then he sat down and he became known as Nishada. So Nishada is one clan of people in India. They are called Nishadas. And as it is described, they live in the forest area. Tasse van sastu naishada giri kanan go charaha yena ahanad jaya manu yena kalna san ulmanam. So he says that his descendants came to known as Nishadas. So Nishada is famous in the Ramayan. Ramayan. Right? And Lord Ramchandra. He was going to exile to the forest for 14 years and he has to cross the river. So when he has to cross the river, this boatman, he was in Nishal. So he came. So Lord Ramchandra asked him that please 
take me to the other side. So he got scared. So he said that I'm a very poor fellow. And I only have one boat. Please don't do this. So Rama was very surprised. And what did he say? That I am only one boat. He said, what? I am only asking you to take to the other side. And I will pay you. So he says, no, I know that. That you can pay him. But I am little worried. So he says, what, I, what is your worry? He says that my worry is that if you touch my boat, then it can turn into a woman. Because we touched some stone piece and it became a woman. You know, this Gautama's wife Ahalya was touched to be a stone. So Lord Ramchandra touched his bare feet and it turned into a woman. So he says, if, she, if my boat becomes a woman, then my children will starve. <laughs> Because this is only my means of livelihood. So he says, I'm just worried about that. So Nisali was very clever. So he says, then what do you want? He says, what I want is that I have a small boat. So first I want to test. I will fill it with water and I will wash your feet. And then I will see if that small boat does not turn into a small girl. Then you can sit on my boat. So he actually wanted to wash Lord Ramchandra's feet and Lord Ram would not have allowed him otherwise so he came with this idea and he says that this, this is an experiment if the small boat does not turn into a woman then I can take it and all right. so he washed his feet and then he took him across now when he took him across he did not have any money to give him. So he asked Sita to remove some jewelry she had. So Nishan, he says that I will not take any money from you. So he says, why? He says that in India there is a custom that those people who belong to the same clan, they don't charge each other. Nai sena, nai let. Dhovi sena, dhovi He says, the barber will not charge another barber. And there is a barber and he goes to barber and please say, he's not going to charge him. The washerman will not charge another washerman. So Ram said, what is this? He think I am a boat man or not? So he says, yeah, we belong to the same clan. So he says, oh, what is this? So he says that I am taking you across the river and you take people across the Bhavsagar, the ocean and the material world. So, why the people of the same thing don't charge that? Okay, you come, I'm a barber, you come to me, I shave you, one day I come to you, you can shave me. <laughs> he says, one day I will die, then you take me across this portion of the material world. So then we are equal. <laughs> so then Lord was very happy with him and they became friends. So these are the Nisadas. Descendant. So he says that Tasya Vanshastu Nashada Giri Kanan Gochara. That the descendants of this Nashada came to know as Nashada. And they live in the mountains, in the forest. Yena Ahajara Jayamanu Venu Kalmasa Urugan. So why was he black and short in color? That all the sin from the body of Vena came out in the form of this Nishana. So now the body became pure. And now when they will churn, then the pure king will come out. So Vena has both things in him. Because he came in the dynasty of Dhruva Maharaj, Manu, Anga. So he had genes from this dynasty. He also had a mixture from the side of his mother, who was daughter of Mirtyu. So what they did that they 
purifying the gene. They took out the bad samskaras from the genes. They purified the DNA. And now the good DNA is remaining. So from that, they will do creation of nice king. This is what they did. So this is the end of 14th chapter. This remain Bhagavata in Mahapurani, Paramahansan. Sanghitayam Chaturth Skande, Prithu Sharite. Nisadot Pakti Nam Chaturja Frantiyaya. So next is 15th chapter. Let me see if I have any commentary. So Nishidaiti Naso Rajyogaiti Vavsaiti. Why, when he was born, they told him to sit down. Why did they tell him to sit down? Because they realized that he is not qualified to be the king. Because king also has to have some good appearance. Not this black, short fellow, copper hair, red eyes. So they did not feel that he was qualified to be the king. So they told him that keep quiet. Otherwise he was thinking that maybe they will say, when he said, what shall I do? They will say, become the king. Maybe he was hoping like that, because I'm born from the king's body. So he said, no, no, you just relax. <laughs> Don't have to worry about anything. And yena kanena sau jayamano vena kalmasam aharat jagraha tena sa nishado nichi jati So he says that because this person who was born, he has like extracted all the sin. So all the sin means the samskara is for sin. Because the body is dead now. So the samskaras they were taken away. Means the virus was removed. Like you have a computer hard disk, a nice program and then there is some virus. <coughs> so the virus was removed. This was the antivirus program with Charmin. Right? So you have antivirus program to kill the virus. So that's what they did. They removed the virus and it came out. Now when the virus is killed, they also tell you that this virus found. And then the virus is removed. So you can also see that. So this virus came out. And the virus is being described how it appeared. So now the good program remains. So that's why I say that Vena Kalmasam Aharat Jagra. This person has taken all the impurities from the Vena's body. And therefore he was born as a low class, belonging to the low caste in Nishad. So Nishada is there considered as low born. Tasya vansastu nashada ati nicha bhoon. Therefore, his descendants were nashada or very low type of people. They were not highly educated or highly behaved. So this ends now. Commentary on the 14th chapter. So next we will read the story about King Prithu, how Prithu was born from the body of Vena and his activities which are very interesting. So that we have to know. Churning of the body. Churning of the body. What's the like purification? <coughs> Churning means producing. Produced. They produce it. Cloning. They 
samskara. Hmm. Can you observe flaws around? You know, you bring awareness to these flaws and then you direct them inwards. You know, by bringing awareness, there is some judgment I and mean, there's some discrimination in, in observing that flaw. I mean, you're recognizing a flaw externally, you're recognizing it as a flaw. Yeah. So, my question is just that understanding that fine line of recognizing that this is a flaw, but then. I guess you're, you're not assigning a value to it, to the other person, you're, you're completely then directing it inwards? Yeah, there are two things you can do, that you see the flaw, and then you can become proud that I'm not like that, and this person is like that. So that is one way, another is that this person has this, maybe I also have it, and I should not have it. So you're not bothered about the other. One the other that you become conscious of that in yourself. Because it is very difficult to see your own flaw. You can see the flaw in others. So when you see the flaw in the others, then you try to understand that maybe I also have it in me. That's why I'm observing it. So usually because we observe the flaw in others, we have it. And when we don't have, we have some attachment to it. So, one is that you can take pleasure that somebody is having this flaw and I don't have, so I'm superior and that way. You become critical or you ridicule. Another is that you take another attitude that this is there, I'm also a human being, I give my heart, I may also have it. I must improve on it. Let me do my own searching and introspection. So that's what is prescribed here. Another question, maybe. <coughs> maybe I'm wrong, but I understood that. that this Brahma, the sage that went to the king and killed them, killed him, uh, uh, did a, a dharmic action no? at the beginning. But then, in the same time, this dharmic action, because the king was unrespectful towards God, so it was a dharmic. No? So uh, killing him was a dharmic action. But then, in the same time, this action is also adharmic because the Brahmas didn't respect, they didn't pay respect to the dynasty of the king. So how is possible that in the same time one action can be dharmic and adharmic? This creates in me some confusion. No? So it seems like this to me, but maybe I'm wrong. Please uh, tell me how it is. No, it is possible that it's like when you give charity to somebody, right? So giving charity is dharmic action, right? But if that person misuses it, then it also becomes a dharmic. So on one side it is dharmic because you are doing charity and of course some part of the charity you misuse it, then it also becomes a dharmic. So there are different types of karma. There are some karma which are shukla karma, means purely dharmic. Some are Krishna karma, which are purely adharmic. And there are some karma which are called shukla Krishna karma, mixture of both. So that is possible. So they recognize this and that's why they are trying to rectify it. But this will not happen. I have a phone cut on my class. Hello. 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 Hello.
fourth type of karma, which are neither sukla nor krishna, neither sinful, neither dharmic nor adharmic. That is a devotional action. So there are four types of activities. Black, white, white, black mixture, both, neither black nor white. is part of it and that's why I said that there are two ways to see things. One is that you can get angry at other people, you can criticize, you can feel proud on these things. And other is that you can be actually grateful that because of this association I'm learning something. And that's when we are sincere about spiritual advance. And then only you think like this. Otherwise usually people take great pleasure in finding fault and others. And when there is no fault, they will try to search for it. And this is a great satisfaction to your own ego. So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Pranava Pishini Chene, he says a very deep meaning behind it. Mahanda Mahanda. He needs to have this prideless state. Not that we have to be useless. Many times people also think like this. I don't want to study Shastra, then I will become proud. Means you remain useless. So humility does not mean that you remain useless. Humility means that you have all good qualities. If you have to serve Krishna, who is the most qualified person, and Upasana means to be close to the person, to be actually on the same platform, and you have to have similar qualities, but not be proud of that. Devotee is not stupid or ignorant or less qualified, he is most qualified. He is not, he is just illiterate, he is most educated. But not proud of it. That is the meaning of humility. Usually all these things bring pride in people. Whatever thing you develop, whether it is beauty or strength or power, physical power, money power, and people become proud of that. So devotee does not become proud because he sees that everything belongs to God, he also becomes proud and tries to utilize it in the service of God. That's what humility means. external show of holding hands, but it's an internal realization. And Krishna himself is very humble. He is the most qualified, knowledgeable, omniscient, omnipotent, everything. And he is very humble. So devotee is like that. We have to be with Krishna, we have to be qualified. Any other question? Any other question? A question about this silam. What? About this letter that they say, 